Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm Henry Ong, President SIMCC and Scholastic Trust Singapore. Haile. Oh, hello guys. I'm Haile. I'm from Brazil and I'm a SMCC scholar. I'll be heading to SAU Carbondeo through SAMCC Dr. Jared Darn endowed scholarship to study computer engineering and I'm also an uh, ex participant of a lot of SAMCC Olympiads like CIMOC and IJMO. Okay, so today at this particular video, we're going to show you about the uh, Mass Warrior gameplay and winning strategies. So uh, Rahali and I will take turns to show you key strategies you should be adopting in order to enhance your chances of winning at Mets Warriors. Great. So for a start, firstly, if you haven't seen the previous video where we talk about the rules, please watch it and here you're going to understand it more easily. So we start with the empty board and the first step we need to make is the both teams will roll their dice and assemble them in, arrange them in ascending order from left to right. Just like that. After that, okay. Oh, so, yeah. So, go so with this, basically, uh, compare the two dice. Okay, uh, one, one, two, three. So the player with the second dice showing a two will start the game and get the red chip. Yes. Okay, highly. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, sorry. So here, after placing the dice and discovering which player, which team will have the red ship. The player that got the red ship will be the first to make an attack and capture one of the other team's dice. So here, who will be the the bottom player and the top player, Mr. Henry? Do you want to be the bottom or Okay, the so I'll player? be the bottom, you'll be the top. Okay, so you can start with your okay, attack. So the first strategy I'm going to employ is that whenever we are playing Mets Warriors, the first winning strategy is very simple always attack your opponent's biggest sided die. So that will be the 20 sided die showing an 18. So I'll attack that dice and I'll try to use my below average dice. So I have a one and a two, uh, especially the 12 sided dice. So I'm going to try to use that in my attack. So I have one plus two uh, times six. So that will give me 18. And so <clears throat> that's a mine attack. Okay. So I re then capture it and re-roll and quickly bring back the dice to the three empty boxes uh, without having to arrange them in order. Okay, then next over to Rahili. Oh, great. <clears throat> so I'll follow the same strategy. I'll try to remove to capture the biggest sided dice of my opponent. In this case, the 20 sided dice who has a number 16. And just because if I keep the dice there, it can be very dangerous for me in the middle or end game since I cannot compete with that. I have no dice that can compete with a 20, for example, so I need to remove it. And more than that, I will try to use my weak dice to remove it because I can reroll them. So having a six sided dice with the number one is not useful for me at all. The number one is very low, as you saw in the previous video. The number one is a very weak value for a six sided dice. So my strategy here is always use your weak dice to perform mine attacks to reroll them. But OK, so why am I using the one here exactly? Well, just for that, just to reroll it, because I don't need it actually for the expression. My expression could be just four times three plus four, in that case 16, but I'm multiplying by one just to reroll it. And you could also say you don't need to make four times three plus four. You could use just four times four. Yes, but doing this crazy expression allows me to reroll my eight sided dice, which has a three. And the number three for an eight sided dice is a weak value. So I need to reroll it and try to get a stronger value, right? Yep. OK, one more thing I want to add on. The reason why we attack the bigger sided die first is just this simple example. Do you want at the end of the, your game, your opponent to have a 20 sided die and you are left with a four sided dice? So how much you have a much lower chance of winning than your opponent who has a 20 sided dice. 
So that's why always capture the bigger side of the die as soon as you can. You're very right. So here I'll just capture, reroll my dice and get them to the board. Okay, now it's my turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture the 12 sided dice showing an 11. Okay, and to do that, um, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, so uh, let me rethink. Uh. Okay, okay, we. Maybe we can do just a, a cut and Norman yeah. can just. Okay, go. Norman cut this. Okay, so we're going to restart it right here. So, Okay, so uh, we're also going to simulate uh, how other players are reacting to it. So this is not a winning strategy. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I haven't realized it before. Yeah, yeah, okay, wait, wait, let me think. Okay, cut. Uh, 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 Norman, we'll re reshoot this particular place. Uh, so what we'll do here is, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh my move now so let's say i'm gonna attack the 10 sided die showing a two okay and the way i'm gonna do that is i'm gonna use a strength attack uh use a tree uh, a weak tree to capture my opponent's two okay reroll and take the two out of play okay good so now for my movement i'll Keep doing the strategy to try to remove the biggest side of dice of my opponent. And I'm doing that by taking my seven, which is a strong die, and my uh, four sided dice, which has a one. And I will just multiply them just so I can reroll my four sided dice. And here we are trying to show not only the best moves, but what can happen in a game so you can see your opponent's mistake so for example here i'm using a very strong dice my uh, eight sided dice which has a seven but also i'm avoiding to use my 11 and my five which are stronger so yeah this was my best play and i just remove and reroll and i was lucky i got a eight on the eight sided dice and a very strong on the four sided dice Okay, great. Uh, so now it's my turn. So uh, next move. Okay, so I'm going to attack my opponent's 12-sided uh, die be before it gets very dangerous for me. And I'm going to use uh, three dice. So 2 plus 3 plus 6 to get 11. Okay, a mine attack. Good. So now my turn. And... I need to remove that 10 sided dice before it gets too dangerous. And I can perform very easily a uh, strength attack using my eight sided dice. And remember, the strength attack can be used when you have the same values, except for the stragonary rule of the red sheep, but we will cover that later. So here I'm using my eight sided dice. I remove using the strength attack, I remove his dice and re roll mine, getting a six. Okay, good. So now it's my turn. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get rid of his six. Okay, so I'm going to use all my dice uh, and I'm going to use uh, one, sorry, four plus two times one, which is six, uh, using a mine attack and uh, we'll then capture the dice, reroll the, my dice and it's my opponent's turn. Okay, so now here I have an interesting uh, situation because my opponent has a very weak uh, of dice because he has two ones and if I manage to do that correctly I have a high probability of having him to not make any movie at all on the next moves so here I'm using a preemptive strategy I'm trying to protect my dice from any attack before he could do that and here i see that his strongest die is the the two so I, I need to remove that two and only leave him with two ones because if he has only one and one he will not be able to attack me if i have a three for example so i also need luck because i will reroll my die and try to not get one or two 
And based on that, it's better for me to attack his four-sided dice using the number five. Why the number five and not the number three? Because based on probability, I do not want to get a one or two after rerolling my dice because he would be able to attack it. I want to have a three, four, or any higher number. And if I use my four-sided dice, I have a 50% chance of getting one and two. But if I use my six-sided dice, I have only 33% uh, chance. So it's better for me to have lower chances of getting one and two. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm attacking his number two using my five and hoping to not get one and two. So here I perform a strength attack and okay, that was not that good. He still can attack me, but well, that's luck. The game is 80% strategy, but we have a luck as a part of the game. Okay, good. So luckily uh, he had a two, which gives me a chance to use both my numbers in the mine attack. So one plus one will give me eight. And you realize that both my ones are very uh, uh, big dice, okay, meaning that it's a six sided and eight sided. Potentially, I could get an eight, which uh, if once I get more than three, okay, I get four and above, uh, and I have two dice to do that, he's in big trouble. Okay, let's see what my luck uh, shows for it, okay? So very luckily, I got a two and a four. And so with the red chip, uh, if Rohaili captures my two and rolls a four, I will lose the game. But that's only a 25% chance. Let's see if I am get lucky. So here I have only one option of movement. I need to make a strength attack against his two. And I do that. And luckily, I got a four. Oh, so one out of four chance, you did it. <laughs> okay, so now uh, because of the penalty chip, I lose my equal power. Therefore, I cannot attack Rahili. I lose my turn and it's over to Rahili. Yeah, so if you remember, as we said on our previous video, the player that starts the game, the one who gets the red chip, cannot perform a strength attack of equal power at the end of the game. So Mr. Henry could not attack me with a strength attack because he has the red chip and he cannot use the equal power anymore. So he loses its turn and I won a game because my strength attack is not limited. I can use the equal power and I won. Yay. Okay, so in the real Mass Warrior game at uh, CMOC, okay, your team will be playing against uh, two other team, uh, three other teams. So you have a chance of playing with three other teams. Each game that you play with each team will be three rounds. So you can earn three teams, uh, sorry, three points from each team. If you win all your games uh, against all the three teams, you'll gain a maximum of nine points. And those points are very important because that could be the decider between gold, silver, bronze, or no medal at all. So work hard, make sure uh, as you are playing, team leaders and those who are very strong in Mads Warriors, please teach your team members how to make sure that they understand the rules in Mads Warriors because the strategies that they use here will be you very useful for them when they are doing the math mastermind. Okay, all the work that you are going to, uh, the time they're going to do to spend with, with your work, uh, weak players to improve will show results when they are working on the Mads Warrior, Math Mastermind individual round. Okay, good luck and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys. Bye bye. See you in the next video. Bye.